I'm Stefan Netz working at Grand in Lyon, France. And today I'm going to talk more about the uh, general um, Faust ecosystem. So not only the compiler, but everything with, which is uh, done and developed outside of the compiler itself. Um, so we have uh, several new things in the compiler. We have new backends. We have new options that have been uh, added uh, recently, uh, the two, three last layers. As Jan uh, uh, told, we have uh, decided to expose some of the internal API uh, of the compilation chain. Uh, and we have a new building system uh, thanks to the work of David Brown. We have new architecture. We have improved tools to debug, optimize, and deploy the code. And we have new libraries, a contribution done by people uh, and included into the standard libraries, but also uh, external libraries which are maintained by uh, external uh, developers. Uh, we tried also to uh, improve the documentation. Uh, we had some workshop into COVID time, and uh, we also added a new tutorial. And uh, we try, and I'll, I try in particular to animate the community and try to, yeah, make a, a sense of community into the Faust ecosystem. And some perspective at the end of the talk, we will see what we try to pursue and, and uh, develop uh, in the force ecosystem itself. Uh, so the compiler, we have uh, five new backends and one uh, a work in progress. So first one was a, a C-sharp backend contributed by Mike Oliphant. It, I think it was two years ago, something like that. Uh, aiming to be used into the .NET compiler system, but also, as I remember, I think also into a, a game engine, uh, uh, which is using uh, uh, C-sharp language. There is a new uh, Dlang backend contributed by also by an external uh, contributor. It's an record to be used in Dplug. Dplug is an audio plugin framework. So basically using uh, the, the language to develop audio plugins and that allows to um, generate different format of uh, audio plugins in the language. We have the C major backend. So uh, C major is a new language developed by uh, Julian Storer and Cesare Ferrari. The guys who were working at Rolly at that time and, and developing the sole language now the song language is finished, but there is a new, a new thing which is called uh, C major, and which is basically the same language. So it's an imperative language with a LLVM uh, based uh, dynamic compilation and with a JIT compiler. So we have uh, written and forced to a C major uh, backend, and there is a tutorial that you can possibly follow into the first uh, uh, doc, dot gram, uh, site. And there is a tutorial to explain how you can generate uh, C major code starting from false code. There is a force to C major tool that you can use uh, as a command line to generate monophonic or polyphonic code. And there is also an export into the first web ID when you can possibly uh, directly export C major code. Uh, there is uh, the Jula backend. So here also the point was to try to enter the new, a new community, a new ecosystem with the Jula language, which is a very interesting language used mainly in data science and uh, mathematics and uh, all this uh, community. We also have a, a tutorial that helps to uh, and uh, explain how you can use a uh, um, uh, first uh, Julia backend into, into Julia. You can directly generate Julia codes that you can then uh, embed and compile on the fly into the Julia uh, read eval print loop and possibly uh, embed everything. And there is also uh, yeah, additional tools to, to create uh, 
uh, audio 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 plugin of uh, well uh, force to for, for audio Julia too so that you can have uh, listen to the to the audio result directly in uh, in Julia. Um, there is the JAX backend contributed by David Brown. I guess David is going to demonstrate uh, this work later on today to be used uh, mainly to do machine learning kind of application at signal level and to, to be used in the JAX ecosystem. And uh, last uh, thing is uh, GSFX backend. So GSFX is a kind of scripting language inside the Reaper uh, 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 Do, and uh, here uh, in Lyon we have Joan Philippe working on a force to GSFX backend. It's a work in progress, but it's already working more or less. We we already have the monophonic version running, so it means we can uh, compile to this uh, GSFX uh, language. Uh, we have new option uh, into the compiler, or at least. Uh, reworked option that were uh, already there before. For instance, the uh, mem for memory uh, option, which basically allows to better control the TSP memory layout. So instead of having uh, everything, uh, uh, every memory, every uh, needed memory be uh, in, in the flat, uh, in the flat uh, DSP. You can control the way you want to to allocate, like uh, uh, between uh, short delay lines or longer delay lines that you may want to um, to allocate on different part of your memory system, and it's mainly uh, needed when you want to deploy an embedded uh, platform when you don't have access uh, 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 easy access to all this and you have to decide where to put a different part of the DSP uh, memory more uh, basically. So this mem option uh, allows you to do that and basically you have to use uh, a custom memory manager so uh, instead of having of using the new uh, uh, allocator in C++ or uh, malloc and and this kind of thing in C, you, you would have to use your own memory uh, manager that will be uh, feed with information uh, on the different uh, part of the DSP structure you, you will have to, to allocate basically the, the li uh, delay lines and the other part of the memory needed by the DSP. So this is something that is really useful when you deploy on embedded uh, platform. We have uh, improved a bit the error and uh, warning uh, messages. So now we have a new category of warning message. So basically message that you may want to have as a developer, but that do, do not stop the compilation. Uh, so right now it's only usable into uh, when you use first uh, as a command line, but at some point, I guess we will add it into the first uh, web ID. Probably um, there is this work that we do in the Cifala and FAST project. So basically, when we want to deploy uh, and use uh, first and deploy on FPGS, so this is the FAST project. I guess Homa is going to explain this a bit more later today. Uh, so the dot uh, OS option is for one sample. Basically, the idea is to do a very uh, low latency uh, computation by uh, uh, computing uh, uh, samples by samples and separate, better separate control and compute so that, that in the case of FPGA, we are able to deploy the compute, the sample level computation on the FPGA and move the control part, basically dealing with uh, controllers, sliders, uh, buttons, all this kind of related computation on the, on the other part of the audio board, which is basically a CPU, uh, ARM CPU, where we can have the control uh, code running. And in the, this uh, Cifala and FAST project, we also have, as ex, uh, Jan explained, uh, the fixed point generation uh, 
work in progress. Basically, we want to be able to generate fixed point instead of floating point so that to consume uh, less resources when we deploy on uh, FPGAs. This is also a work in progress. Uh, accessing the internal API in the compiler. So basically, uh, as Jan explained, the compiler has different stages. Uh, here it's a bit older picture, but basically on the left we have the source code. Uh, what Jan was uh, naming a circuit, uh, the old naming was box. So we were speaking of the box language and box. Uh, um, box API, so basically circuit equal box, more or less, uh, so two names for the same thing. Uh, so starting from the left, we have the source code, we have circuit or box, we have a symbolic propagation phase that uh, produce signal, then th those signal are optimized, and then we have uh, simplification, normalization, uh, instruction generation, and uh, uh, imperative language generation at the right part of the of the this picture, and so we we have uh, added two ways to access the compilation chain, what we call the box API and the signal API. Obviously, those API were inside the compiler, but they were they were not official, and we 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 think it could be an interesting thing to have it. And the point is obviously uh, allowing other project or other language use part of the force compilation chain and everything what we have done, and especially the backend, the multiple backend model we have. So the box API, we, we have uh, an official uh, libforce uh, header that you can use uh, with the documentation of all the API. There is a tutorial that you can follow to, and here in this case, we show how we can use this API from C++ because it's the simpler way to do and the official way to, to do it, obviously. So we ha you have this box sex, box, box par, box wire kind of API, and then you can generate uh, you can build in an algorithmic way this kind of uh, box structure, and then you can compile the corresponding C++ code in, in this case. Uh, and what is the one possible use case of this approach at the circuit or box level? So the point is here to allow uh, programs to uh, describe uh, expression, box expression in an algorithmic way. So we may want to use this kind of approach to do machine learning at symbolic level, for, for instance. This is a, an idea that probably uh, David Brown is going to, to try. Yeah, and David also has, has done a Python-based uh, approach uh, to use a, uh, the box API uh, into the Dreamer project. And I guess you will have a bit more explanation later on. The signal API, same ID, uh, a, a, a public header to, to access the API and a tutorial that explain how you can use this API from C++ and C and generate the code and all this kind of thing. And what is a possible use case of uh, uh, access, uh, uh, accessing this API, for uh, instance, having a purely graphical language uh, uh, dealing at signal level and being able to use the uh, last part of the compilation chain. And the motivation for this, for opening this uh, uh, signal API actually came when we discovered the elementary audio language uh, developed by Nick Thompson. So it's a, a, a functional signal-based language in the sense that as a, as a programmer, you are basically describing a signal expression, uh, infinite signal like we have in Faust and with a C++ runtime and on top of this C++ runtime to, to, to have something efficient, you have a, a pure JavaScript uh, upper language in some sense. So that is that use uh, the internal uh, API C++ export 
you can program uh, in the web basically or in Node.js, this kind of uh, thing. So this, this kind of uh, language, yeah, there is a clear connection between uh, this uh, um, elementary language and uh, the signal API into Faust. Building the release, as I say, uh, David uh, uh, did a lot of work to help uh, to have a completely automatic GitHub based action uh, to build the binaries, which is very helpful since we want to deploy on a Mac OS, Intel and ARM version and Windows and Linux. And now we, we have, uh, since I, I published last week, the new uh, binary uh, version uh, done with uh, with this uh, GitHub action. And we have the same with the first slide. So basically David also uh, wrote uh, everything to have a first life be compiled automatically uh, on Windows at least. And I'm still running, uh, compiling the Mac version manually. Uh, we have new architecture, uh, um, an architecture, an architecture to uh, deploy for VCV rack. So I guess you know VCV rack, which is a very interesting modular based uh, uh, approach um, uh, completely software. Uh, so we have the, the force to be CV rack uh, tool that you can you can look at on the on the GitHub uh, force GitHub, and we have also a tutorial uh, that explain how you can use force to target uh, for uh, for VCV rack. And as you see, the GUI is still far from perfect, but well, probably a bit of work to do to improve that. Uh, new architecture, we also have a, a new architecture to target uh, DAISY, Electrosmith uh, DAISY uh, board. And we have a first to DAISY tool. And there is also an interesting project developed by Raphael Danger a French engineer working in Berlin. And this is interesting because he developed a kind of approach where you can describe a modular uh, a module, basically to a real module with a user interface and with the DSP running on the DAISY chip and uh, with a language that allows to describe the front, uh, the front part of the module. And obviously, uh, the DSP can be uh, developed in C++, but also uh, now in Faust, so like this one, for example, here you have a Faust flanger developed with this kind of approach. So it's quite, quite interesting to follow. And Raphael uh, presented this work uh, last year uh, in IFC, so you, you may find the video of his presentation. Yes, and debugging. Uh, we have developed and uh, improved the way as a compiler uh, well, to have a better uh, low level control of what happens at different stage into the compiler. For example, the uh, tables uh, before, uh, well, we had we had the compiler that were that was able to generate incorrect code in some cases like uh, generating code with uh, tables, using tables and with read and write uh, indexes that could be uh, wrong and reading or, write or writing outside the table. So this is more or less because we have the interval computation uh, system in inside the compiler, which is not correct, comp correct. And in some cases it was not uh, 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 finding the correct uh, um, minimum and maximum value for, for the read and write access. So now what we do is that we have a safe, uh, uh, always safe way to generate the code. So if the interval computation gives us enough information to be sure that the read and write uh, uh, indexes stay into the table, we don't have to do anything special. Otherwise, we generate uh, bound checking uh, uh, code uh, to be sure that we don't have memory access uh, errors. 
we also have an option that allows to check uh, if you are uh, writing um, code that you that use math function outside of their domain, like uh, a square root of a, uh, a value uh, below zero or log log logarithm of zero, this kind of thing. And this math, math exception option allows to, to check part of this at compile time, if it makes sense, or at runtime. And you may have information uh, on what happens on, on your program. And to help also uh, uh, understand what happens on your code, we have this intertracer tool, uh, which is, I guess, interesting to look at. Basically, we have in Faust uh, since, well, I think we did that like five years ago, we have uh, an interpreter backend. So basically we have a kind of um, uh, low level bytecode generated inside the compiler. And we have a kind of virtual machine, which is able to uh, uh, run, run this uh, bytecode uh, on the fly. And then we have uh, instrumented this uh, virtual machine so that we can check a, a lot of things when the, co the code actually runs. Obvi obviously an interpreter is much slower compared to real really compiled code. But the point here is to have something that you can use, uh, you can use to debug uh, what happens. And I've done, I've written this tutorial that you can have a look. Uh, again, it's a tutorial advanced debugging with interpreter. So the point here is that you can understand what happens when you are writing code, which possibly, uh, Compute the value outside of that uh, function domain. You, you may generate not a number of if in infinity kind of uh, results. So you have the, the interp tracer tool give you a trace of the state of the virtual machine when you have this uh, kind of errors. You can debug this uh, read table, read write table uh, primitives and you can uh, you can have the safe uh, model which always uh, uh, generate uh, uh, correct code, but you may uh, you may possibly uh, disconnect this safe mode by using the CT zero option so that you you have a faster code when you use a read and write table. But obviously, you have to be sure that your code is correct and never uh, read and write outside of the of the table and with this kind of uh, check uh, interpreter uh, tool, you can you can check that everything uh, behaves correctly. Same for select. Well, we have some additional things that you can you can read about. But uh, I think it's a very interesting tool if you want to be sure you, your code is running correctly. You can you can use it. Uh, and we have written an extended documentation on how you can debug your code, better understand what happened with, with, with the compiler, different tools. Uh, so uh, the, this city option, this math exception option and explanation on how you, you can use an interpreter tool. Uh, we have a bit of documentation on error messages. Error messages are a weak point of the first language uh, from day one, I guess. We don't have something uh, really new on this part of the compiler, or unfortunately, but at least we have a better documentation. So we had nothing before, now we have something. And what I've tried to do is at least uh, make different categories of uh, error message you may have when you compile a first program. You can have syntax errors, obviously. You can have box connection errors if you don't follow the semantic of the box connection block diagram algebra. You can have pattern matching errors. You can have signal related errors. Uh, so I have described some of them, it's still not complete, but at least you have some. And uh, math uh, function out of domain errors and errors that can happen at the la last stage of the compilation uh, uh, chain. 
And we have also this new category of warning messages. Uh, not perfect, but better than before. Optimizing. When you want to optimize your DSP code, even if the compiler tried to generate uh, correct and good code, uh, you may you may still want to to try to have the fastest possible code. Obviously, you I I guess you know that the force compiler is able to generate different shape of code. The default model is what we call the scalar uh, scalar mode, basically a, a giant big loop computing the sample uh, one by one. But we can also uh, use a dot uh, vec mode, which basically uh, uh, deploys the uh, DAG, the direct acyclic graph, a graph of, of the computation, internal computation as uh, sub loops connected with uh, uh, intermediate buffers. And this uh, way of generating the code is basically um, better suited when you use uh, an auto vectorizing compiler because some of the, those sub loops can be auto vectorized. And in this case, even if the resulting code it is much larger, you may have better performance by using this uh, compilation mode. So the point of this FOSS bench and FOSS bench LLVM uh, uh, tools are basically generating different uh, variant of the code. So obviously the scalar version, but also the vector version with different uh, vector size, which is an internal vector size into vector mode. Uh, the different way of uh, um, generating delay lines, faster and slower, uh, using more memory or less memory. You can play with all this uh, option. And the point of this tool is to generate a different possible uh, set of compilation options, uh, benchmark all of them, and, and, and find out uh, the best one. The Foshben version generates a set of C++ uh, files and compile all of them in a single binary. And Forst LLVM does this by using libforst, so the embeddable version of the force compiler with the LLVM backend and using a JIT compiler to directly uh, generate different versions of the, the code with different um, compilation option and then ben benchmarking the result. Uh, there is also an interesting uh, tool which is the name force to object. Basically here the, the point is that when you have the, your final uh, your final C++ code, like you have found the best set of options using Forcebench or Forcebench LLVM, and you want to deploy on a CPU. But you may want to compile uh, and have uh, your code uh, take profit of the specific characteristic of the CPU you are running on. Like uh, when you are running on Intel, you have all these categories of Gener different generation of your uh, your CPU, and you may want to use the best uh, version of the compiler to compile directly for a given machine. So this force to object basically uh, compiles for a given set of uh, CPU that you give you in the command line, uh, generate the different version of machine code, uh, compile everything in a single binary, and then we have a kind of wrapper that basically will will uh, select and dynamically load at runtime uh, the version corresponding to a given CPU by just asking uh, the CPU when at runtime. So it is quite quite uh, interesting because it uh, it allows to optimize a, a lot, and we we had a, a very interesting use case by helping the guy from Expressive E. Expressive E is a French uh, company uh, developing different kind of thing into uh, audio domain, like this uh, Touche uh, hardware, as they have now the Osmos keyboard, which is very, very interesting. And they have, uh, uh, sorry, I go back on the page. They have developed the, this noisy, 
uh, synthesizer, which is completely written in Faust internally, even if they don't, they, they don't say it too much, but well, it's using Faust. And we helped them to uh, optimize the code uh, with this Faust to object uh, uh, tool. And it was quite uh, interesting in, in their case. Uh, so, and there is also uh, uh, a kind of tutorial that basically explain uh, what I've uh, uh, told in a more uh, detailed way. So, optimizing the code, uh, distinguishing between compilation done, uh, computation done at compilation specialization time, at init time, control rate, sample rate and the kind of tools that you can use to optimize your code even for uh, memory uh, memory uh, issues memory access issues and force bench and force to objects so everything is explained in this tutorial uh, we have uh, new libraries uh, co uh, contribution by different people from the community uh, dario san filippo is a very efficient and uh, great contributor on the library, uh, writing a lot of interesting DSP code in Faust. Uh, this uh, library uh, for anti alias uh, kind of uh, audio computation. Uh, the FDS, the CLIB library, uh, which was developed by Ricardo Russo, uh, which allows to do finite, uh, finite different physical model. And Dirk, Rosen, Dirk Rosenberg uh, has developed this wave digital filter libraries that is also now part of the standard uh, libraries. And we have uh, several community contributions like uh, ABC Lib contributed by Alain Bonardi, uh, a French composer and engineer and developer researcher. Another library developed by Dario, another one by Dario, and another one by Dario and Till Boverman. Uh, I think this one was presented in a, a previous version of IFC. And uh, this library developed by uh, Italian people. And I guess I don't have uh, all, all uh, list, the complete list of libraries, but the, these are the main, uh, the main libraries. Uh, we have done a lot of work uh, improving the documentation uh, in particular the architecture uh, model uh, which is obviously an important uh, thing into the force ecosystem as, as soon as you want to understand better what happens outside of the compiler and uh, when you want to deploy yourself the produced code so now we have an extensive uh, documentation onto the architecture file system, how you, you, how you can connect the produce code, uh, the code produced by the compiler to the external world. And also you have, you can see here that there are a lot of additional resources uh, contributed by the community, different C++ tools, uh, C major, Dlang, Julia tools, uh, Python tools, so there are a lot of projects that allow us to use uh, force in different uh, different ecosystem, WebAssembly also. Uh, yeah, we, we had a, a workshop on physical model into the COVID time. So uh, Dirk Rosenborg uh, presenting the web digital model uh, library. Uh, there is a contribution friend, friend from uh, Jérôme Villeneuve and, and James Leonard, uh, Ricardo Russo and uh, Romain Angelus on their work. Uh, several tutorials added uh, for about the community, the community. What we try to do is, uh, well, why at least I try to do on my side, uh, we have uh, uh, first uh, Discord channel uh, that you can find. It's uh, the the link is uh, on the main uh, first site. So we, we try to I try to answer a question here, and people are answering question also. People from the community, 
There is also a fourth channel on the audio programmer community uh, uh, Discord, which is animated by uh, Joshua Hodge, which is also a very uh, interesting uh, community to, to be connected to because a lot of audio developers are basically uh, on this uh, Discord, from amateur to professional uh, audio developers. Uh, we have a uh, Google Summer of Code. Uh, it started last year. Last year, we were, we were able to have uh, integration of, of, of files in Hize. Hize is a, an interesting uh, authoring tool developed by uh, uh, Christoph Hart, in a German guy. And uh, so now we have uh, the LibForst uh, and plus LLVM backend uh, compilation uh, uh, added into his uh, framework that allows basically to, to describe nodes and DSP into this uh, framework completely in Faust. You can have a look. So it's basically a way to uh, describe a sample-based instrument and with effect and uh, generate uh, plugins, uh, binary plugins, more or less. And this year, we will have two uh, different uh, projects. Uh, one uh, about automatic differentiation is the first compiler. Here, we try to see what we can do at the first uh, language level to enter again the world of uh, machine learning. And uh, Jan Cluster is going uh, to help uh, improve the situation and clean up the situation on uh, Faust and the web. So we have all code and we, we need to improve this. And those projects are going to start at the end of May. And we have the first uh, powered by Faust page with more than uh, 200 projects. And I tried to list all of them. Well, at least uh, the more interesting one, uh, obviously not all of them are still uh, active, but well, you have a very long list of projects and it's very, very interesting to, to, to see what people are doing with Faust, obviously plugin, but uh, uh, sometimes uh, you know, a musical project, obviously, web project. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of things uh, forced in emb embedded, uh, different kind of embedded application, uh, all this. You can have a look. And obviously, in most of the, the case, you can access uh, the DSP code and possibly reuse uh, the force code in your own project. Uh, perspective, well, uh, we would like to try to see what we can do uh, with Faust into the artificial intelligence domain. So the, the thing that we, we have a control of the, well, with, with Faust, we, we are designing our own language. And we think that there are probably interesting things to do at the language level directly. So this is also the idea of trying to think about auto differentiation directly into the compiler. And I guess David Brown is going to explain a lot more what we have in mind. And we maintain a first ID page where we try to list everything we would like to do, but we don't have enough time to do all that. Part of this is uh, what we propose as Google Summer uh, of code project, but we also have a list of a never ending list of ideas that we would like to develop, but well, this is a current situation. And this is the end. And if you have some question, I have my assistant that can possibly help since we are in the time of new assistance, maybe we can find some help here. Yeah, thank you very much, Stefan. <laughs> uh, cool, so, so we can take questions in the classroom first and then on the Zoom, the Zoom chat. Uh, after that, any questions in the classroom?
So I know it was pretty rough this morning, like to have so many uh, stuff on Zoom, but uh, like this afternoon, afternoon it's all going to be in person. So, uh, well, at least on this side of the world. So, so, but uh, uh, yeah. So there is no question in the classroom, but I, I suppose there are probably questions in the chat. So. Doc explaining errors is excellent. Hopefully the compiler can print a link to the page. Ah, oh, yes, could be. Yes, this is something we can do. So no question, no questions here. Yeah, maybe you can everything give it was clear. Yeah, it was yeah, very it was clear. clear. So, <laughs> can you I, maybe I, I, I want to hear, hear more about them? I think the French, uh, the, the French comment that started with an E. I just want to express the express V that that sounded interesting. So, if you if you want to go and tell about that, it would, it would sound good. Any details you can. You can What's it, what's it like, like partnering with uh, with with uh, a company who's developing developing since? How does that work work with Graham? That, is that helpful for you and so on? Stefan, did you did you hear the no. question or? Absolutely not. Okay, okay, so I will read the question. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the question was by David Braun, and the question was, was uh, has it to partner with a company like, like Expressive? Like, can you to tell us more about how Faust is used part of their, their like? Well, well Expressive, it's, it's, an uh, yeah, it's an interesting use case because they were, they started uh, oh, uh, at hardware, doing hardware like the push uh, this kind of thing. And uh, more recently, they started to develop their own uh, SP. And at that time, I guess they had the choice. Uh, they are starting from scratch uh, uh, from uh, C or trying to find something else. else. They discovered Faust and they started to use Faust. And most I guess they are mainly using well, mainly using Faust, it's not only Faust. Obviously, they, they still have to do uh, some development in C, so they have to mix DSP uh, produced by Faust and DSP uh, developed uh, manually. Uh, but well, the thing is that they they do not communicate a lot about the facts they are using Faust. Well, maybe maybe because uh, they consider it's something that they want to hide. So you, you cannot find anything on their website, even if we try to have them do that. That one, you know, you know how it's working. So it means uh, at least uh, this uh, those guys are using fast, and we help them to to do that best we can. And it's it's uh, it's interesting to see what kind of use case they they, they can have. Uh, and it start to be really uh, interesting because they have developed a lot of uh, DSP code. They have a huge uh, uh, library, internal library, and, uh, I, I, and they have products, uh, the common products that you will use uh, fast also. And we we also have. Um, Another uh, like, uh, company in France uh, using Faust, but in a more, uh, I would say, uh, not so important compared to Expressive. Yeah, but obviously this kind of uh, 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 this kind of company also they would like to have the on-demand feature to be able to uh, to have uh, DSPs when you can control what is uh, running and what is not running. So control the CPU uh, use this kind of uh, use case. So it means we have motivation to uh, to improve uh, to to finish the implementation of the on demand primitive because of the kind this kind of use case obviously. Thank you, Stan. Uh, do we do we have more questions? Questions or classroom chat? Okay, well, 
Thank you, Stefan. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you.